So <clears throat> when we first started the semester, we were talking about um, we were talking about how populations grow in particular discrete populations. That you have a breeding season once a year or once every three months, and your population would change size. And we use some examples of populations that changed by some fixed percentage every year, right? Um, so we did a nice little table and looked at, okay, what if each year your population adds 3%, okay? So Okay, so you add 3% add each year. Okay, so what happens if you start at, um, if you start at uh, the beginning, then maybe you have something like a thousand people. I don't know why this not quite connecting there. But if you have something like a thousand people, then um, you add 3% a year, you add um, 1,000 means you go up to 1,030 after the first year, then after the second year you add 3% more. Okay, not perfect. I apologize. Add three percent more, and well, that's another thirty point nine people, right? And if you want to check with your calculator, make sure that's right. Thirty point nine people. So you have one zero six zero point nine. Okay, and that's at generous. Oh. Generation two. Okay. Okay. So that looks kind of weird. I'm gonna have to pause that. The idea here is that let's see if I can make this more precise. So the idea behind this difference equation is that um you're only going to use information from the prior generation, which means that your formulas look different. So instead of this being a function of time, it's going to be a function of what happened in the prior generation. So that's kind of weird. How do we write that? Well, if you are thinking about, um, if you're thinking about the notation here, P sub t plus 1 is the population size in the t plus 1 generation, so next generation, okay? And you want to write that in terms of, as a function of what happened in the generation prior. So that would have been the p sub t generation. So how does this relate to what is over on the other side? Well, this is p sub 0, this is p sub 1, okay? So for example, p sub 1 is p sub 0 plus 3% of p sub 0. So that is a way of describing 
the first generation as a function of the starting point, right? Okay. So this is different than what we usually see with models, because what we usually see is the year, the population described as a function of the year. Now this is not very general as is. We can actually simplify this. This is 1.03 to the p times p sub zero. It's not working for me. 1.03. If I want to make this a general equation, so this rule is obeyed for every single subsequent generation. Then all I do is I say, okay, p at time t plus 1 equals 1 1.03 times p at time t. So the population size in the next generation is always going to be 1.03 times the previous generation. In fact, that's exactly what we put into our Excel sheet. Do you remember that? We exactly had that in our Excel sheet, except instead of saying piece of T, what we did was we said equals 1.03 times, and we referenced the prior cell, right? And then we copied and pasted that formula for all cells. So it's the exact same thing. So it's almost like we're talking in Excel language here, okay? So we're always referencing the prior cell, and this is called a difference equation. Now, there are different kinds of difference equations. We have difference equations that grow by a fixed percentage each year. We have difference equations that grow by a fixed amount each year. That's different, right? What we saw in the example that I just put up here was that in the, if we started at a population size of 1,000 and grew by 3%, then the first year we add 30 individuals, the next year we add 31. So that's different than adding 30, 30 uh, individuals each year. Why is that? What is it about adding a percentage that's different than adding a fixed amount each year? Why are you adding more when you add a percentage? There's more in the previous generation. So it accumulates, right? The same way that getting interest on interest accumulates faster than just adding a fixed amount each year. So what you're doing is when you grow by a percentage, you're growing a little bit more each year because you have a little bit of a bigger population size each year. Versus adding by a fixed amount, you're always going to grow by the same number each year. You see how that's a little bit different? In biological terms, population management terms, this is the difference between a birth rate that's proportional to your current population size versus adding individuals through immigration or adding uh, individuals through stocking at a fixed amount. Okay? So, in mathematics, we have different terms associated with each of these types of sequences. So the one where you add a fixed percentage each uh, generation, sorry, that was a little sloppy, but x to the n plus 1 t equals r times xn. Um, the, that fixed percentage is called geometric growth. geometric growth. And 
this is what we saw when we were playing around with our models, like our bunny models or our uh, models with some population that grew by 3% each year, 3% each three months, whatever. Okay? So we saw a slow accumulation. What you'll see in these types of models when R is greater than 1, so that means you're adding a little bit each generation, is you'll see something that looks like this. So you're not adding a fixed amount. The difference here between these two points on the x-axis is less than the difference between later generations, right? So later on, you're accumulating many more per year than you were very early on, okay? Because you're starting to amass a larger population, okay? There is a general solution for this. I don't have to write geometric growth as a difference equation. This is the difference equation form. I don't have to write it as a difference equation, though. I can write it as kind of a formula that we are used to using, where you just plug a, a, a time step in and then get out a population size. And so that alternate formula um, is called a general solution. In, in the book, they call it a general solution. General, that's supposed to say general. Um, the book calls it a general solution. I also call it a closed solution. You'll hear me say that word a lot, closed form or closed solution. the starting population is a constant, R is a constant, the variable is in it, your exponent. What is that called? Exponential. Exponential, yes. So geometric growth, growing by 6 percentage each year, is actually the same as, as the continuous thing or close to the continuous analog of exponential growth. So if we're in a continuous system, we call this exponential growth. When we're in a discrete system, we call it geometric growth. But they're really the same thing. If I were to connect these dots, I'd be making an exponential one, okay? But in discrete, I'm just changing, I'm without change between these points, okay? But if I were continuous, it would be an exponential one. So that's the assumption. When we're talking about a population that's growing exponentially, that the assumption really is that it's growing by a fixed percentage every year. And that's why, okay? There is another option. We said another option is to talk about immigration or stocking. And in these situations, um, we are talking about, about
a fixed number being added in each generation. So that number doesn't change. So instead of it being a fixed percentage, we have a fixed number added. Okay. And this is called arithmetic growth. in math. In biology, you call it stocking or immigration. If uh, D is negative, you may call it emigration. So emigration is uh, fixed amount leaving. Immigration is the fixed amount incoming. And the graph for that type of process for D greater than zero would look like straight line for the most part, if they were connected. So the general solution to this is x to the n equals the starting point plus n times step of adding d number. Which really is a linear. So if you're continuous, then this is the same thing as being linear. And here, if you're continuous, that's the same thing as being exponential. Does that make intuitive sense? Which is going to grow faster if R, between R being greater than 1 and, and Z being greater than 0? Which, if you start with the same population size, which is going to grow faster? Long term, the geometric. Long term, the geometric. In the short term, it depends how many you're adding. Okay? In the short term, it depends how many you're adding. So uh, let's do an example of one of these problems here. Let's do an example. So a population of wild hares increases by 13% each year. Okay, before I go uh, any, any further, geometric or arithmetic? Geometric. geometric, right. <clears throat> Currently, there are 200 hairs. If Xn is the number of hairs in the population at the end of year n, find the difference equation relating n, Xn plus 1 to relate Xn plus 1 to Xn. So 
let's think about this. We're going to add 13% each year. Okay? So, our first year, we're going to start with the amount that we have, and we're going to add 13% more. And we're going to do that every single year. And so we don't have to go through and figure out what happens the first generation, the second generation. We can just think about this in general. So in general, the next generation is going to be the current generation plus 13% more from the current generation, right? And then we can add these two terms, right? Just add coefficients. Done. That's it. That's the difference equation. Very straightforward, very fast, very easy. If you are adding 13% each year, or if you're adding some R, or some, uh, I should just say, some um, some percentage each year. Then the difference equation will always look like let's say that P is in decimal form, not percentage, okay? So if I'm adding 13% per year, the difference equation is always going to look like Xn plus 1 equals 1.13 Xn. Does that make sense? If I'm adding 6% a year, it's going to look like 1.06 Xn. Does that make sense? If I'm adding 5% uh, per year, it's going to look like S to the N plus 1 equals 1.05 Xn. If I'm taking out individuals, maybe um, uh, through uh, some death rate, okay, and I'm removing at a fixed percentage per year, uh, maybe this could be um, hunting for a fixed period of time, okay? And that hunting rate, as long as it's not capped in, uh, from permits, as long as you just let people go in for a month, then probably the rate of removal is going to be proportional to the current population size, right? So if you're removing by a fixed percent each year, then you're just going to have a minus sign here. So if I said that 87% would be around in the next generation, that's the same as removing 13%, right? Okay. So having 87% there in the next generation is the same as removing 13%. So the difference equation would be x to the n, n plus 1 equals 0.87 xn. Now, let's go back to what we talked about before. If the, the closed form for these solutions, oops, <laughs> the closed form for these solutions So the closed form for these solutions looks like one point one three to the n times whatever your initial starting population size is. So this is the closed form. Or general solution. 
And in this case, the closed form would be point eight seven to the n times your initial starting population. In the situation on the left, what happens long term? What happens long term to your population? It'll go up. It'll go up. no growth in your population, if you only allow it to be hunted and you don't allow them to birth, I don't know why you would do that, but if you did, okay, then you'd eventually get a population of zero, right? Makes sense. Um, sometimes these terms of birth and death are combined into a, a birth and death term. Um, and so depending on how those the birth rate minus the death rate turns out. If it turns out that it's greater than one, on average, is going to be adding people to the population on average, then you're always going to get a population that goes to infinity if there's no resource issues. If you get a death rate that's more than birth rate, you're always going to get a population that goes to zero. Okay? That's basically what it breaks down to. Okay. Um, the difference between the way that the geometric model behaves versus the arithmetic model. So the arithmetic model is um, sometimes appropriate. I mean, like as we said, for um, situations of immigration or uh, or death. Uh, rather, immigration or emigration or some uh, fixed um, stocking amount or some fixed permitted harvesting amount, okay? So for those situations, the difference uh, that uh, the way the arithmetic, when you have a g greater than zero, the limit of the population, If you add individuals on average, right, it makes sense. If you just keep adding 20 individuals every single year out to infinity, you're going to get an infinite population if nobody dies, right? Well, that makes sense. The difference occurs when you're taking away individuals. You have to be a little bit careful with your interpretation because is less than zero. What I should say is I'm going to say that D is positive, but I'm going to talk about removing D as opposed to adding D. So I'm going to have minus ND, okay? So if I'm going to be taking away the individuals every year, if I were to strictly look at the limit of this, look carefully, I'm going to get minus infinity, right? Okay, now you have to be a little bit careful with the biological interpretation there, okay? 
because if you pro if you propose some kind of harvesting program where on average you're going to remove and the population itself is not going to grow but every day you remove 10 individuals you're not going to get negative 20 individuals or negative infinity infinity individuals as your long-term behavior right that doesn't make any sense so make sure that when you're working through some of these solutions and you're looking to provide solutions and you're asked to think about these solutions in terms of a biological context that you don't answer kind of robotically at oh well the limit's going to be minus infinity stop and you say algebraically the limit's minus infinity but if we're talking about a real harvesting program we can't have negative individuals so long term we're going to have zero okay that caveat makes sense okay so sometimes you're going to get solutions algebraically that don't make sense biologically. <coughs> and so there's a little extra step you're going to have to do with translating that. Okay? Does that make sense? So your next set of homework problems, I'll just post them online so you don't have to write anything down. And you guys are free to go. We'll go back to our regularly scheduled Friday quizzes this Friday. Okay?